Fallout 4 is a massive game, deep with systems and mechanics that directly affect how easy it is to survive the post-apocalypse. While tutorials will explain some things, there's still plenty the game won't teach. Here are 14 things Fallout 4 doesn't tell you. Every station and settlement with a friendly crafting station is a storage extravaganza. You can use the transfer command to dump your junk and spare weapons in these locations and come back for them at any time. What's even better is that all crafting stations in one area are linked. You can dump all your items into any workshop, for example, and access all of them from the nearby weapons workbench. This is hugely useful, as Fallout 4's complex crafting system requires you to constantly gather new resources for modding and repair jobs. A great tactic is to pick one go-to area like Sanctuary to dump all of your excess materials and weapons into. You can fast travel back anytime your pockets are getting too full, or before ransacking an area, and it will all be ready and waiting when you come back to craft. It seems strange, but you can't throw grenades from inside of vats. You'll have to rely on your own aim if you want to blow something up. You can, however, throw a grenade and quickly pull up vats while it's still airborne, giving you a chance to detonate the explosive while it's still in the air. It takes some practice, but it can be lethal if you time it right. Using your crafting abilities, you can tear down the derelict houses and sanctuary and replace them with new structures of your own design. Build enough beds, as well as accomplish enough Minutemen recruitment missions, and you'll soon have a bevy of settlers. This, in turn, will attract traders who will wander in with new wares to sell, including some killer weapons. Let's see what you got. Just make sure to loot all the old houses before taking them apart. This works for other settlements too, and it's well worth the effort to add extra food, water, and beds in order for these communities to grow. Power armor stays where you leave it, so if you run out of gas or want to save fusion cores, don't be afraid to abandon it. Just be sure to remember where you dropped it off. The map will display a helmet icon of the location of your power armor. Just be careful not to do this with multiple suits, as only your most recently used power armor will be marked. As you finish the intro of Fallout 4 and Vault 111, you will come to an elevator leading to the surface. Just before you write it up, create a save file. This point marks your last chance to respec your character and allows you to skip the 15 minute tutorial if you start a new game. Enjoy your return to the surface. It's also worth noting that if you save your game constantly, and have the game set to frequently autosave, it can get confusing when trying to remember which of your save files are which. Consider saving your game while looking at something important, like a person or a place, so you can better identify what you were doing at the time. As you gather followers, you'll discover that they tend to wander around your settlements. That can be a pain when you're trying to find someone in particular, like a merchant. You can waste a lot of time looking for them, so craft a bell at your main settlement's workbench. Ringing it will call everyone to you. What do you need? Sure, your pit boy is one of your most important tools for surviving the nuclear wastelands of Massachusetts, but did you know it also functions as a portable gaming console? The Pip-Boy has a tape drive, and that means you can play any mini-game tapes you collect on the go. No need to wait for a terminal. You can break down junk at workbenches to build more crafting materials, but you'll sometimes find yourself short of key components you need for your projects. That's where the tag command at the bench comes in. By tagging a material, you'll cause a magnifying glass icon to appear next to every piece of junk you encounter that contains that desired element. It's a great way to complete crafting and mod projects quickly. The ability to scrap everything saves huge amounts of time when you're trying to thin out your inventory and put some defenses up around your settlement. Simply drop whatever excess gear you have on the ground, pull up the build menu, and turn stacks of unneeded items into useful components in an instant. Sadly, the fuel that Power Armor runs on doesn't last forever, so you will frequently need to leave your suit behind. When you do, you may want to take the Fusion Core out using the Transfer Inventory command. Otherwise, NPCs might grab them when alerted. This is annoying at best when the NPCs are friendly, and catastrophic when they're not. 
There are three kinds of armor in Fallout 4, and they're not clearly defined. Some full suits are sort of self-contained full armor sets. You can't customize them or layer over or under them. Other armor, especially some kinds of clothing, act as an under armor layer which can be combined with over armor, head, chest, arm, and leg pieces. Experiment in your Pip-Boy to see which combinations work. Did you go right to the vault at the beginning of the game? The game makes a point to insist you go there, but if you don't, you'll be in for a surprise. We need to get in. We're on the list. Linger around Sanctuary for a long enough period of time, and you can find out just what happens when the bombs fall and you're out in the open. Ammo might be even more important than the Commonwealth's bottle cap currency, especially at the beginning when it's in scarce supply. There are a few things you can do to maximize your ammunition efficiency and access. You will find various types of ammo at traders, on enemy corpses, in chests, and at specific locations throughout the world. Investing in the scrounger perk increases how often you find ammo, and can be a big help. Carrying three to four different weapons that use a mix of ammunition lets you take advantage of whatever's in ready supply. You may be tempted to put a powerful weapon in the hands of one of your companions, but know that this will require them to consume ammo, while their default weapons won't. You will likely accumulate plenty of ammunition for weapons you aren't using. Bullets sell for good money and you can invest that profit into the ammo you do need. Certain locations are more likely to contain ammo boxes and chests. If you're running short, consider raiding military forts, bunkers, raider camps, or a law enforcement building. Just remember to always be looting. Ammo, even rockets and mini nukes, have no weight. So there's no reason not to grab as many as you can, whenever you can. Weapon crafting and customization is extremely useful to make sure you get the most bang for your, well, bang. When you do customize a weapon, you should take the time to name it. That way you don't accidentally sell it or turn it to scrap. If you want to know the best ways to start your adventures in the post-apocalypse, be sure to check out our guide to the things to do first in Fallout 4. You can find that and much more in our follow up for guide on IGN.com. For everything else gaming, stick with IGN. <laughs>